New Hampshire CDL has mad practice test. Question 1. Cargo tanks are Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. Only made in one size. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. Answer Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Question 2. The two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment. On the gas tank and a sticker in the glove compartment. On a temporary license plate holder and the steering wheel. Any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. Answer any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. Question 3. In what location must you keep your shipping papers which describe any hazardous materials? On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. In a locked glove compartment anytime you are outside of the vehicle. In a fireproof pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. In a fire safe pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. Answer On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Question 4 How often should you check the tires on a placard a trailer that has dual tires? Each time you stop. Once every hundred miles. Once every three hours. Start of each day and every time you stop. Answer. Start of each day and every time you stop. Question 5. A safe haven is. A place to stay once you have reported your company for illegal activity. The slang term for the last stop at the end of your driving day when carrying hazardous materials. A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. A place where it is safe to dump any kind of hazardous materials. Answer. A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. Question 6. What is the main difference between a portable tank and a cargo tank? Portable tanks must additionally show the owner or lessee's name on them. Permanent or temporary attachment. Being filled while on versus while off the vehicle. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 7. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? At least 20 feet. At least 10 feet. At least half a mile. At least five feet. Answer. At least five feet. Question 8. Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature control trailer, one with a heater, air conditioner unit? Classes 1, 3, and 4. Classes 1, 3 and 6. Classes 1, 2.1 and 3. Classes 1, 4, and 5.1. Answer. Classes 1, 2.1 and 3.
Question 9. What is a technical name? The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community, accepted as standard. The medical terms for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. Answer The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Question 10. A placarded vehicle must carry what type of fire extinguisher? One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. One with a rating of. One with a rating of 10 AB minimum. One with a rating of 5 BC minimum. Answer. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. Question 11. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. Should you turn off your engine before or after you unhook the hoses after finishing that delivery? Turn it off after unhooking. Turn it off on arrival. Use other power to run the pump. Turn it off before unhooking. Leave it on the entire time. Answer. Turn it off before unhooking. Question 12. Which of the following hazard classes utilizes a transport index in order to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? Class 1. Explosives. Class 3. Flammable liquids. Class 7. Radioactive materials. Class 4. Live chickens. Answer. Class 7. Radioactive materials. Question 13. What action should you take if there is no phone available and you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop? Keep driving. Slowly and cautiously, until you reach a phone. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. Leave your truck parked with emergency lights and walk for help. Answer Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Question 14. Which of the following is a necessary qualification for non-bulk packaging? Max. Water capacity less than 454 kg or less if used as a receptacle for gases. A max. Capacity of 450 liters or less, if it is used as a receptacle for liquids. Max. Net mass less than 400 kg or less if used as a receptacle for a solid. All of the above. Answer All of the above. Question 15. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? Name in italics. UN marks. Descriptive name in Roman print. Identification number. Answer. Name in italics. Question 16. What are shippers trying to accomplish when they package the material? Make it easy to identify. Make it as light as possible. Make it easy to open and close. All of the above.
Answer. Make it easy to identify. Question 17. Do you need to stop before railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? Only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. Yes. No. Impossible to tell without more information. Answer. Yes. Question 18. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at dock to carry 100 cartons of battery dust? Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. Answer Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Question 19. Which of the following is not something you need to know in order to determine if you need to use placards? The manufacturing date for the materials. The amount of all hazardous materials of all classes you are carrying in your vehicle. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. The substance or materials hazard class. Answer The manufacturing date for the materials. Question 20. The Emergency Response Guidebook. ERG was created by the National Department of Transportation, so it is used nationwide. Contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers which is why you must label things correctly. Is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. All of the above. Answer all of the above. Question 21. How far away must you stay from a bridge, tunnel, or building if you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? 300 feet or more. 500 feet or more. 100 feet or more. 200 feet or more. Answer. 300 feet or more. Question 22. Which hazard classes must you never smoke, or perform any activity involving fire, within 25 feet of? Class 1 only. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Class 5.2 only. Class 4.2 only. Answer. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Question 23. Where are the two main places where the hazardous identification number appear? On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. On the shipping paper and on the package. Answer On the shipping paper and on the package. Question 24. What is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? Communicating risk. Forcing other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. Warning those with children to drive in another lane. Giving people something interesting to look at while driving. 
Answer. Communicating risk. Question 25. Which of the following materials would be acceptable floor liner for moving division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? Carbon steel. Stainless steel. Non-ferrous metal. All of the above. Answer. Non-ferrous metal. Thank you for watching the video and wish you will get your driver license soon.